Today on X2, we're going to be talking about one role you can play that will definitely help you win more games in Star Wars Squadrons. This particular role isn't utilized enough in the lower and mid tier gameplay. However, for higher tier and the top end games, it is absolutely required because if this role is fulfilled on the enemy team and it isn't on yours, you're guaranteed to lose. And what ship do you exactly use for this role, I hear you say? Well, for once, we're going to be talking positively about the bomber class. So yes, this role requires you to use a TIE bomber or a Y-wing. Sorry, B-wing players. Unfortunately, this role isn't for you. But before I jump into today's video, guys, do you know that over 70% of you watch our videos and you're not subscribed? So how about you guys do me a solid and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell for more tips and tricks on how you can win more games in Star Wars Squadrons. Oh, also, if you're looking for a squad to play with and you don't like playing on your own, why not head over to our Discord? We have a whole chat room dedicated to finding a squad and we have chat rooms dedicated for all of you getting into a voice com and getting into games together but with that all said and done let's jump right into the video so this role is actually an ai farming class role before you panic i know ai farming was actually the worst in season one it was so broken that the winning team would just constantly ai farm until they just won the game it made it impossible for the defending team to get onto the attack because there was no ai to farm on their side and too much morale was given to the winning team that ai farmed in season two it's a lot more balanced and it's actually really healthy so today i'll be running through the loadout you need to run for this role a little bit of information on how the ai spawn where they move and how they act and finally the best maps to ai farm on from best to worst so the reason you want to run this role is so that you can gain morale without having to kill enemy players. If you're having a hard time where the enemy player is stalling out their attack phase and your teammates aren't dying but aren't really killing any of the enemy players either, then this is where AI farming roles really shine. You're in the back lines farming out all the AI, getting free morale per AI kill. Whether the enemy team likes it or not, they're going to be slowly pushed into defense phase. Another time this role really, really proves its worth is right at the beginning when it's decided who goes on attack phase. If you're a bomber and you're able to get to the enemy AI relatively quickly and be able to kill about five to seven of them, that is enough to push your team into the attack phase really quickly, providing your teammates don't die in the first 10 seconds, of course. Now that we've talked about the overview of the role, let's talk about loadouts. This is the one and only loadout you really need to be running for AI farming. And these are standard laser cannon, Goliath missile, multi-lock missile, particles, reinforced hull, and twin ion engine. The New Republic has the exact same loadout, but with fortified deflector shields. So why the Goliath missile and why the multi-lock missile? For one, you need to find a squadron of AI, lock onto the center one and fire your Goliath missile. That Goliath missile will kill all the AI surrounding that center AI that you shot at. If you're able to get them into a perfect spot or time it correctly, you can kill five AI in one go with one Goliath missile. That is 15 morale instantly given to your team, providing that you're on the defense phase. This would only give you five morale on attack phase. So this role doesn't work at all well when you're attacking. Only use this role when you're defending. So when your Goliath missile is on cooldown, look for another squadron of AI and then use the multi-lock missile. Give yourself a couple of seconds to fully lock on to at least three to four AI and then fire. If you're successful, you'll be able to kill four AI with one shot of the multi-lock missile. And that in itself is 12 morale given to your team right away. And then rinse and repeat. Goliath missile and when that's on cooldown use multi-lock and when that's on cooldown use goliath and that's pretty much the role it's really simple if you think about it for people who don't really like fighting other players this role is really good to stay on the back lines and just farm like it's a average moba just a warning though good players will want to get into the back lines and hunt you down you're a priority pick just like support players are against the enemy team so it's your interceptor and fighters jobs to make sure that you don't die if an enemy interceptor tries to come and kill you. So if you find yourself under fire against the enemy player, be sure to double tap the A button on the Xbox controller or the X button if you're on the PS4 controller. That will highlight the person firing upon you and then you can just press the Y button on the Xbox controller or the triangle button on the PS4 controller to ping that enemy player to your entire team. 
That should be enough communication to tell your allies that you're under fire by an interceptor that is pushed a little bit far beyond his bounds. Okay, now that we've covered the loadout, let's talk about how the AI works in Star Wars Squadrons. When the game starts and it's deciding who is going to go on attack phase, about three squadrons of AI is spawned on either flagship. So that is about 15 AI spawned instantly. Five goes to the left side of the map, five go to the right side of the map, and five go into the center of the map. Now, this does change from map to map, but that is generally how it goes down. So when you're starting the game, I highly recommend going on the left or the right side of the map to avoid as many players as possible to get to that squadron of AI and fire that Goliath missile. Remember, you're a bomber. You're going to be a really easy pick for many players on the enemy team. So be sure to be drifting and maneuvering the best you can. Also, be sure to keep some of your boosts saved so you can get out of there when you're being attacked. Now, the AI do split up from time to time, but generally you should see a lot of them grouped together. You'll be able to target the AI one by one by ensuring that you have the AI squadrons on your priority wheel at all times. Like I said, you won't be fighting any enemy players, so you should only focus on the AI. These AI spawn every five minutes or so, and when you're on the defensive phase, they tend to come to your side of the map. They'll even go further into your side of the map when your frigates or cruisers are both defeated. But of course, keep an eye out for squadrons of AI, even if you can't find them on the locking reticle. Just keep a keen eye. If you see a whole squadron of them, just start flying over there and you'll be able to lock onto them with a the multi-lock or Goliath after you reach about a thousand meters in distance. All right, now we've got a basic idea of how AI behave in Star Wars squadrons. Let's see how it differs from map to map. Unfortunately, AI can be a little bit dumb. So the more crowded a map is, the more likely they're going to crash into something and die. That's bad for you because it means you can't farm it and get that free morale points. So the best map to AI farm on is clearly Yavin. That map has absolutely nothing on it, so the AI is able to fly freely. Here, you'll be able to kill a full squadron of AI very easily with a Goliath or even a multi-lock missile. Next up after that is Esseles. Esseles does have a big space station in the center of it, but it doesn't really disrupt the AI that much. Whilst it can be annoying that some will fly underneath the space station, don't bother chasing them. There'll be plenty above it. Plus, the AI tends to be a bit further in on your side of the map when you're on defense on Esseles compared to most other maps so you can play it very safe when farming. Next up is Foster Haven. A lot of the AI tend to stay away from the frigates and the cruisers. They tend to fly in the open space side of the map rather than the dockyards. So it does make it a lot easier for you to farm. However, it does make you out of position and enemy players can capitalize on that. Most likely because your allies are going to be on the dockyard side of the map. So it's going to take some time for them to travel to you to make sure that you don't die. However, compared to the bottom three maps, this isn't much of an issue. Next up is Zabian Abyss. This one isn't so great because there's a lot of debris around the map. This is because the AI will just decide not to play anymore and just fly right into the electrical energy on the outskirts of the map and die. That can be really annoying, especially when you're trying to target onto one and it just disappears. But it is manageable. You do have to be a bit more aggressive in your positioning, which will open you up to be attacked more often. But you can get away with AI farming relatively successfully on Zabian Abyss. As for the bottom three, they're all as bad as each other. Sisabo, Galatan and the Deary Dockyards are awful for AI farming on. The AI just tend to crash into everything they see. So squadrons are split up and you find yourself chasing down one AI when all the other four are dead. If you're playing the New Republic, Public, it might be better to swap out Goliath missile for Ion missile instead. This is so you can fire it on anyone playing as a TIE defender because TIE defenders are super weak against Ion missiles. You will AI farm a lot slower on these maps. You might get about 30 to 35 per match when in Yavin you can get about 40 to 55 and Nadiri Dockyard is at the bottom of those three. It is really hard to farm on Nadiri Dockyard because all the AI just love crashing into things and dying. And that's how AI react from map to map in Star Wars Squadrons. For my final few notes on AI farming, I don't know how effective this is in solo play, mostly because you're really relying on your teammates not dying when you're trying to AI farm. You have to farm three and a half AI for every teammate's death. And when teammates are just not playing very well, it can be very frustrating, almost like everything you're trying to do just leads up to nothing. So if you're actually a bit of a dogfighter and you know how to take down enemy players, it might not be best to do AI farming when you're actually better at dogfighting. But if you're playing in a team and you've got a dogfighter that really knows how to play against enemy players, then just AI farm. It could be so good for your team. 
So if I'm playing with Eckhart Ladder or Scout Whacker, it's their job to make sure that my AI farming experience is as smooth as possible. And then my job is to make sure to farm that AI as fast as possible. So yeah, I recommend doing this in a duo matchup or a trio pre-made. For solo, I'm really not sure. It depends from game to game and how good the enemy team is. One final reminder, in some certain maps, you can't one-shot AI with multi-lock missiles. We don't know why that happens. It only happens in Esseles and the Deary Dockyard, where when you fire your multi-locks, there is a good chance that you won't kill them in one hit. For the rest of the maps, it is not an issue. Why? We honestly don't know. It could be likely that the AI have different values depending on what map you play, and it just appears that some maps, some AI have more health than others. This applies to both factions as well, so you have this issue on both the M Empire and the New Republic. And that is the secret role you can play that will win you more games in Star Wars Squadrons. And that does, yes, bring us to the end of the video. Let me know your thoughts on this video, by the way, guys. I'm curious to know if you knew about AI farming. Perhaps this is a role you might take up. Let me know about that as well. And for people who already fulfill AI farming roles, did you learn something today? Let me know all of that in the comments down below. I'll read all of them and try to get back to some of you as well. But other than that, guys, I have been Charlie. You've been watching X2 and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.